Yep. Okay, so I said that we would take some time and go through the um, questions today. And um, the first question, I think you could probably answer on your own, but just for funsies, let's do it together. Um, what variables were held constant in this lab? What was one? Temperature. Temperature of the water. Sea level. That was pertaining to the lab. Pressure. My height is constant too, but it, oh, yeah. it's not very important. Pressure. Uh, was the pressure changing? Yes. Yeah. D. Now, if you were referring to atmospheric pressure, yes. when I look down here, here is the atmospheric pressure. Was the atmospheric pressure changing? No. Yeah. Not I think it's debatable. Um, was the pressure changing much? No. Would it affect your data? Probably not much. But that's a qualitative statement, Molly. You might say to yourself, well, the mercury was rising. Didn't I say it was 29.96 inches and rising? Yeah. Like so well, it was dropping that day. It was oh, a dropping. Yeah, oh. rain that day, didn't it? I don't, I'm not a weatherman. So, I mean, the barometric pressure was changing. So I can see uh, both sides of that coin. Would it be distance? Um, that was affecting the distance is changing, the height is changing, the volume is changing. But it's constant because you moved it like 10? Uh, or no? No. Would the pH be changing? Did the vapor, water vapor pressure change? No. Oh, that's your atmospheric pressure. Oh. Oh, put them on your lab right now. I would. Oh, that's then it'll save you some time. Was it the pressure of the H two O that stays twenty two? Yep, that stays twenty two. The vapor pressure stays the same. So I think those are probably the two most important um, variables that were held constant. Looking at graph one, what is the relationship between pressure and volume? So let's take a look at graph one. So what does this look like? A negative linear slope, right? It looks like a line. So as pressure goes up, volume goes down. And it looks like a negative linear. And as pressure increases, wouldn't it be as volume increases, volume pressure decreases yeah. because it's uh, yeah. a negative slope and volume is the constant? Yeah, it says volume increases, pressure decreases. Well, you can write it either way. As volume increases, as pressure increases, volume decreases. But that's as pressure decreases, volume increases. They're the same statement. Now, it would be a little bit more correct to write this in terms of your independent variable, because which variable were we changing? Pressure. No. We were changing the volume and measuring the pressure. It'd be a little bit more correct to say as volume increases. increases or decreases. In this case, we would say as volume decreases, pressure increases. Because we are changing the volume <coughs> and then measuring the pressure. Volume goes up, pressure goes down. What's happening to your volume? It's going up. Now. These numbers are getting smaller. Yeah. What's bigger. happening to the pressure? Bigger. I have one of the night every time. Looking at graph two, what is the relationship between pressure and one over volume? 
So in this graph, what is the relationship between pressure and 1 over V? What happened to our slope? It's now, it's now positive, right? So pressure versus volume was a negative slope. This is a positive slope. Increases, pressure increases. And like I said, some of these we've already kind of discussed a little bit there, Maddie. Um, looking at the PV column, do you notice any trends about P times V? Fairly consistent, fairly constant. That's where yesterday I was saying that pressure times volume is a constant. So if we do have some variation, that's probably a little relief. Um, well, probably more so in that, how are you measuring the D and the H? How, what was the procedure for measuring those two things? Eyeballing. Eyeballing and just holding it with your hand. And so, I mean, it's pretty easy to tilt that thing or move it up or down. So that would be a big error when it comes to measuring those numbers. Uh, probably would be a lot better to have like a clamp, you know? Um, what does the slope in graph 2 represent? So here's graph 2. This graph is a line. And the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Now as I've mentioned before, what you can do is you can substitute in the variables that are on your axes for y and x. So what is on the y-axis? Pressure. What is on the x-axis? 1 over v. Not v. 1 over v is what's on our x-axis. And let's just not worry about the y-intercept. So p equals m times 1 over v. If you do a little bit of an algebra, then p times v would be m. Right? So what is slope representing? P times v. And what did we say P times V is? It's a constant. So P times V is a constant, and slope represents P times V. So then what does that say about the value of K? It's equal to, it's equal to your slope. And so if you look at your last column here, P times V, look at your last column, these numbers should be very close to your slope. And that's why I had you put your slope on there. 
if you look at it, they should be very close. Essentially, close, your close. slope, close. Your slope essentially is taking the average like 30, of all these. I'd say more like 5,000. Yeah. Oh. So, you, got 30, you might have had a leak in your tube. So essentially the slope is, in a sense, averaging those numbers together. What is the value for r squared in graph 2? The value for r squared in graph 2 is whatever your r squared is. So from this graph it's 0 0.997. Obviously write down your own data point. And what does R squared represent? Uh, the correlation squared, that's the official definition. Of our kind of common man definition is how close your points are? How close your points match the best fit line. We were writing the R squared for the Pressure versus volume one? Uh, graph two is the pressure versus one over volume. Oh, for good. Yep. So How come when some people look in this lab, like I looked online at graphs of this, they have a curve in there? Is it because they add natural log or something to the equation? Very interesting. Um, we'll address that in like two minutes. You can hold on. Um, I just want to make sure before we move on, are there any questions on? Why do you get so much air on this lab? Actually, I don't think you get a lot of air on this lab. I think this last column is pretty much spot on with your slope. But what I've not. Yeah, mine's, yeah. mine's 12,000. That's pretty good. Mine's 30. Okay. So the only thing you have left to do is to write, um, Emma, your summary. Okay. So remember, with your summary, write down the important stuff. Okay. For the most part, everybody did that on the last lab. But I still had a few people doing things like, my flask was 275 milliliters. The temperature of the sink was 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. I captured 35 milliliters of water. My shoe size is 8 and a half. Okay. Look at like important things like your equation, percent error. What did you find in the lab? What is the overall result? So you want to be able to try to summarize it in one sentence. In one sentence? That's the ultimate. To summarize all your results in one sentence. Oh. But I thought no. it was like the whole thing. I was like, no, what? no, no. <laughs> your summary shouldn't be more than a, a paragraph, uh, two max. Uh, errors. How are you going to fix those errors next time? Okay, so errors. Okay, so that's a good example. If there's a leak in your tube, that's an error. How would you fix it? Be specific. You don't, need to don't just say, tape it up. don't have a leak. Um, Duct tape. Get a new tube. Cork it. Make your tube out of titanium. Titanium tube. Well, that might be hard because then you can't see inside. Um, maybe reinforce plastic or maybe you want to you know just seal the leak by putting air in it and looking for where the bubbles are um, but be specific put another one is like how we can make that I think that's probably the biggest error in this line personally so then we get a little guy up there what do they call you or a clamp yeah a clamp <laughs> Get a little man up the boat there. Well, I'm okay. Sorry, I forgot the word. Either one, either one will work, I guess. Put that in the paper. Moyle's law experiment. Little guy needed. <laughs> okay. Um, so I do want to um, put some of this information in your notebook. So why don't you get your notebook out?
Uh, the plan is to have a test on Friday. On all the all the laws. So, what did we find in our lab for pressure versus volume? Negative correlation. We measured a total of, I think, eight data points. And then we drew our best fit line. This is what we did in the lab. The highest pressure you recorded was about 780 millimeters of mercury. So is that why when you brought the scales down to zero, it looked tiny? So I like this lab for another reason, in that, again, it's really, it's, it's more like real science. One danger you have to look out for, Nick, is when you extrapolate, okay? Can you extrapolate in science? Yes, but you have to be very clear and careful about what you do with that information. Because looking at our data that we took, that's a line, right? So if we extrapolate out, our graph looks like this. Well, in reality, P versus 1 over V, or P versus V, is an inverse relationship. But what we studied in the lab, because we're not able to get up to very high pressures, and we're not able to get to very low volumes, what we studied was... That little section right there. Now, when you look at that little section, what does that look like? A line. a line. So, I like this lab because it's just a warning about extrapolating your data out. And so, this is not correct. P versus V is not a linear relationship. You do not need to go back and change your answer on your lab. Okay? But this is the correct relationship. That P is proportional to 1 over V. And that's why I had us go and graph the second graph. Because when you take an inverse relationship and you graph it as 1 over, it does turn it into a linear relationship. So if you have an inverse relationship and you graph one over the variable, the next thing you have is a line. Wow. Uh, mathematically, it turns out that way. And so if I have P is proportional to 1 over V, how do you... How do you turn a proportionality into a... You add a constant. Add a constant. And what is this equation in the form of? equation of a line. The y variable is pressure, the x variable is 1 over v, 
So what does that say about k and m? Slope. So if I want to find the value of k, it is my slope. And that's why I had you do graph number two, because you were able to find the constant in Boyle's law. And now you have everything you need to use it. If I give you the volume, you know the constant, you can calculate the pressure. Um, what we did in the lab was we rearranged the equation to be PV is equal to K, and P times V also gives you the constant. Any questions about these graphs? Yep, yeah, Cindy. Can volume depend on pressure when it comes to gases? Volume does depend on pressure. Boyle's law proves it. But in this graph, volume is the independent variable? Uh, in this, we made volume the independent variable. But we, we could have done things the other way around. We could change the pressure and measure what happens to the volume. The graph won't change. They'll still look the same. So P times V is a constant. So if you take a pressure that's matching volume, it equals a constant. You take a different pressure and it's matching volume, it equals the same constant. That's what a constant is, it's something that doesn't change. So therefore, P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. And so this is the form of Boyle's law that we are going to use. And now's the time we should do an example problem. What do you think, Zoe? Good timing? All right. Mr. Schultz, will we have like a review for test or like review day? Yeah, okay. Thursday. Yeah, I'm tonight. It's actually not that bad. So, um, how about this problem? Um, the for why don't you wait till I write down the problem? Fifteen liters of gas at 30 millimeters of mercury is changed to 15, no, 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 changed to 70 millimeters of mercury. What is the new volume? So this is our second equation. Our first one was Charles, now we got Boyles. My record, and that's why I always say write down all the information you're given. It'll help you identify which equation to use. Because when it comes to the test, it's not going to say use Charles Law now. Use combined law gas now. You use ideal gas now. You will have to decide when to use it. Pressure and volume can be in any units as long as they match. Temperature is the one place, Molly, where you don't have choice. Temperature must be in Kelvin. But millimeters of mercury, make sure the other one's in millimeters of mercury. If volume is in liters, then the other volume will be in liters. If one is in centimeters cubed, the other one will be in centimeters cubed. If one is in kPa, the other one must be in kPa. So that's one point for writing down the info. One point for writing down the correct equation. One point for doing the algebra. So to solve for V2, we're going to divide by P2. And now we can plug in the numbers. So P1 is... 30 millimeters of mercury times 
V1, which is 15 liters, divided by 70. And before you even calculate, you should be asking yourself what answer would make sense. My pressure is getting bigger. So if my pressure is getting bigger, imagine your balloon, Sam. You squeeze in a balloon. What's happening to the pressure? Increasing. Going up. What's happening to your volume? Going down. Decreasing. So the pressure's going up, so my volume better go down. So let's see if it does. And I've got three sig figs, so my answer is going to be three sig figs. 6.43 liters. Wait, so we're going to have to decide between the foils and what we're going to have. Charles, but there's going to be some more. It won't just be boils and Charles. We have another one. So any question on boils? Well, there's one more, Franny. <coughs> you can take Charles's law. You can take Boyle's law. And we can combine them. What do you think we should call it? Gas. The combined gas law. So we take these two, we combine them. Charles? Choils? Choils? I like that one better. I like choils. Um, would it be V1 over one? It becomes. Ooh. Good catch. Did you already subtract the thing? Yeah, we subtracted it off. Just in case. Alright, so it becomes P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Let's do an example problem. Um, 25 liters of gas at 40 millimeters of mercury and 15 degrees Celsius is changed to 50 kPa and 35 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume? So like I said before, the first thing you want to do is write down all of your information. We've got V1 being 25 liters. We've got T1 being 15 degrees Celsius. We've got P1 is equal to 40 millimeters of mercury. We've got T2 being 35 Celsius. And we've got P2 being 50 KPA. Not only is it, you know, good practice, but it also helps you prevent mistakes because you're going to plug your numbers in the right spot. That's good. Also, you might catch um, some potential pitfalls here because we, first of all, we got a problem here with our pressure, right? Because they're not in the same units. 
So let's convert 101.325 kPa is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. How do I know that? I look it up on appendix, uh, one of the appendices. With three sig figs, somehow I get no, that's right. With three sig figs, I get 375 millimeters of mercury. Temperature. Temperature must be in Calvin. That's the only place generally where you have no choice. You must add 273. If you want to be a stickler for accuracy and use 273.15, you go for it. There's my guess. There's my guess. I'm going to round to the ones place. So, that becomes 288. 35 plus 273 is 308. These problems are harder to predict. Our temperature is going up, so volume should get bigger. But our pressure is going up, so our volume should get smaller. So it's kind of hard to tell what the final answer will be. But let's do our algebra. Let's solve for V2. So that would be T2 over P2. Do the same thing on the other side. So then we have P1 V1 times T2 over P2 times T1. Now let's plug in the numbers. Forty millimeters of mercury times V1, twenty-five liters, times T2, three hundred and eight. <coughs> Divided by P2, which is 375. Divided by our T1, which is 288. So Millimeters of mercury will cancel, Calvin will cancel. The only unit left that will not cancel is liters, which is good because liters is a measurement of volume. So let's put it in the old calculator. And I get my new volume to be 2.85 liters. All of these numbers here have three sig figs. And so that's why I'm rounding off to the three sig figs. Now the beauty of these problems is I have six different variables I can choose from to make you solve for. I could have you solve for the original pressure. I could have you solve for the original temperature, the original volume. We just solve for the final volume, but any of these are fair game. And so those homework problems that I wrote at the, on the board um, have you do that. Do you, do you have any questions about the combined gas law? Wait, is 760 constant? 760 is equal to 101.325 kPa. Oh, okay. Just like 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch. And that's on the appendix? That's on the appendix. Okay. Um, you'll probably have these memorized after using them for so many times. 
Um, let's see. I think that's it. Do you have any other questions? Mm -hmm.